Buck Snacks is an oddly named indie game wherein you explore the mysterious Snacktooth Island, catching the eponymous creatures that roam the environment, all while trying to uncover the mystery of the settlement's charismatic founder. Released by Young Horses, the studio behind the delightfully charming Octodad Dadliest Catch, the game is relaxing, features tons of adorable creatures, a colorful cast of eccentric characters, oh. Oh no. Something is very wrong here. Yes, upon closer inspection, there is something sinister lurking behind the game's facade of cute food critters and fuzzy companions. From its character writing, to its setting, to its gameplay, the game teases something far more disturbing than it presents. And what's truly fascinating to me is how this game uses this lurking dread to hook the player in. So join me, friends, as we discover how Bug Snacks makes you care about its characters. When you first start playing the game, you go through a brief cutscene where your editor firmly tells you that if your expedition to the island fails, you'll lose your job. So right off the bat, your character needs this to go well. You encounter your first bug snack, a harmless little strabby, and after catching it, you feed it to your new friend Philbo. Then this happens. Awesome! <laughs> yeah, so that's fucking weird. And what's even weirder is how normal he reacts to it. Oh, this? Pretty neat, huh? It's a side effect of eating bug snacks. And not just him. Everyone you talk to is completely cool with having their limbs, teeth, face, even full body morphed into their meal. This jarringly chill attitude towards the transformation leaves the player with two burning questions. One, what the hell's wrong with this place? And two, what the hell's wrong with these people? This is how Bug Snacks introduces its horror elements. The developers have been very public about the fact that the game takes inspiration from movies like Apocalypse Now and Wicker Man. Apocalypse Now we brought up a lot because that is a story about going to find this leader who has gone missing. Horror movies such as these revolve around journeying to an unfamiliar place on a quest to find a missing person, and Bug Snacks perfectly captures that sense of intrigue and dread. The bizarre cult of personality Elizabeth left behind sharply contrasts with the playful art style, but more than that, the game uses that lingering desire for answers as a tool to engage the player. The player gains a drive to find out more about these people and why they came here. You can catch bug snacks and bring everybody back to Snacksburg. Once they're here, you can do some more interviews and figure out what happened to Lizbert. The interviews you seek to conduct have motivation from both in and outside the story. As both the player and the journalist, you want to know more about these characters, and the way to do that is to explore the island and bring them back to Snacksburg. The island itself remains a mystery even to the canonical experts, as both Trifany the archaeologist and Flufty the scientist are baffled by the history and biology of the island. With no other civilizations other than skeletal remains, and no other wildlife besides the bug snacks, the island feels like a truly alien place, which leaves the Snacksburg citizens as your only friends. Initially, the detached attitude of the Grumpuses make them seem odd and pathetic, but as you learn more about them, you learn how they were people desperate for companionship, and how Elizabeth offered them something greater. Buck Snacks uses isolation as a theme to connect the player to its characters. Pretty quickly during your time playing, you'll realize that going out and catching the Buck Snacks is a pretty solitary experience. While you do encounter other Grumpuses when you enter a new area, they're not going to chat much until you get them back to town. Very rarely will someone join you on your hunt. You're on your own for 90% of the quests. The Buck Snacks themselves aren't much for chatting. Either they run away from you terrified, or they smack you and force you away. So naturally, you'll start to gravitate towards getting as many Grumpuses as possible to the main town. Not only does this progress the story, but it acts as a lure for the player. As soon as you convince Gramble to return, and see his confrontation with Wambus, you know there's going to be more conflict in the future. Well, well, well. Look what the snack dragged in. Oh! I wouldn't have come back if I knew you were here. That's so. Well, I ain't about to leave now. Oh yeah? Me neither. 
the little side tips in the character portraits clue you in that some of these people don't like each other. So, the gameplay of catching the snacks turns into a venue to witness more interactions. The dialogue is incredibly well written, and each character gets along with others differently, so naturally you'll want to see them all together. And this ties in so well with the in-story goals of Philbo and the player character. Philbo wants everyone to come back to town, and you can only interview people and uncover more about Lisbert by engaging with the Grumpuses. After Lisbert went missing, all the Grumpuses went their separate ways. Even a quick glance at the side art in the quest log can prove that none of them are happier this way. I don't know why Lisbert put me in charge, but I do know this. None of you were really happy out there alone. The characters are basically wallowing in their own misery until you come along and get them back to town. They don't really want to be alone, and you want to learn why they broke apart from the town, and more importantly, why they came here in the first place. Right from the beginning, the game makes it clear that these people were not exactly doing well before they followed Elizabeth here. This is absurd. Only a desperate loser would follow Lisbert. For the people of Snacksburg, this community offered something special to them. A chance for a better life, and the Snacks are an integral part of that. As you interact with each of the Grumpuses, you learn more about how each of them have their own form of dependency toward the Bug Snacks. Even the theme song hints at this. An expedition, 13 strong of Grumpuses, who all set off. Seeking out a better life on Snack Tooth Island, they did find a tasty quest to fill the hole that many feel inside their soul. As you feed the characters more snacks, they reveal why they are so enraptured by them. Sure, they're a delicious and never-ending food source, but to the characters, the snacks represent something more to them, something to mitigate a fundamental flaw with themselves. I can talk about each of the cast individually in a future video, but for now, let's focus on one as an example. The cynical and scheming Cromdo Face. Cromdo is one of the earlier characters you meet in the game, and arguably has the worst first impression. He comes off as a scummy, skeezy con man, and the snacks he wants you to catch each require a much higher level of understanding of the game's mechanics. The keystone example of this is when you have to stun a big bopsicle, this guy, with your tripwire, after melting it with a hot snack, but before it melts into two different ones. And you have to do that twice. That sounds like a tedious learning process, and it is. In both mechanics and story, this guy is meant to annoy you. But that makes it all the more interesting when you do finally bring him back to town. As each of the Grumpuses have their own house, Inside Cromdo's, you see all these little details of someone trying to make a name for themselves against all odds. To him, bug snacks are less about their taste and more of a way for him to strike it rich, for him to live the life he wants to have and to never have to go back to his dead-end job. Ah, I used to go door to door selling gruel to grandmas, paid on commission for grump's sake. He dreams of starting a snack food enterprise and is willing to try anything to make it work. The island to him was a chance to take control of his future. Sure, he's bitter and confrontational, but you can see how he has been beaten down by poverty and circumstance. Cromdo is just one in a broad cast of characters that are desperately looking for a better life on this island. Flawed but relatable characters like him are one of Bug Snacks' greatest strengths. These people all feel oddly real, and the game conveys their personal failings in both their conversations with you and their actions toward the other villagers. The fault of these characters are what makes them feel all the more special, and it gives so much more weight to how they all feel connected to the story. Watching the Grumpuses come to conflict gives much more weight to the struggle to get the town back together, as their personalities clash and harsh words are thrown. There's one last insidious way in which the game makes you connect with its cast and that is making you, the player, just as much of an outcast as the residents of Snacksburg. In this story, the journalist desperately needs to know as much about the island as possible, so the bug snacks become your best method of convincing the residents to talk to you and to learn more about what happened. But it's when we look at gameplay where things really get interesting. 
If you're a bit of a completionist like me, you might get taunted by the desire to fill out your codex, just to see that number completed for each region. Even though you don't need to catch all the snacks to complete the game, you only get to encounter the unique boss fights by following character quest lines. Mechanically, you have a reward for engaging with the characters and helping them try to use each snack for their own purposes, such as Chandlo wanting to eat certain snacks to become stronger, or Wiggle wanting to find something to spark her inspiration. But there's something deeper than that, the fact that you want to complete your collection, and you'll go out of your way to do so. You'll even resort to super complex snack wrangling or literally waiting around just for it to rain so you can catch one specific snack. You don't need to do this, and yet, here you are, hoping for something to happen when you catch them all. You are no different from the others here, just as desperate and bound to these creatures. Which makes it all the more tragic when you uncover the secret of the island. After you finally unite the people of Snacksburg, it is revealed that the Bug Snacks are a vicious breed of parasite, one that wants to be eaten to transform any who consume them into snacks and repeat the cycle ad infinitum. They're insidious, patient. You'll show them a weakness, and they'll exploit it. After finding Lisbeth in her horrifying transformed state, her partner Agabel joins her to help control the creatures as the island begins to erupt. The bug snacks drop the facade of weakness and begin to lay siege to Snacksburg. There's a shocking body horror of Lisbeth's new form, but what is truly terrifying is the realization that you, and everyone you've met, have been exploited, with the creatures taking advantage of the most vulnerable and desperate people. When you arrive back on the surface, you see all the characters you've come to know fighting for their lives against the monsters. It's up to you to help them escape, but you are not alone. As you use your upgraded tools to slay the encroaching horde, there's a real sense of weight, as even bitter enemies like Cromdo and Befica stand together to stay alive. For a game this colorful and cutesy, there's some serious stakes in this final battle. Failure to protect a Grumpus from the Horde, and they... well... die. They become absorbed into the creatures, never to be seen again. But you can't allow that to happen. You know these characters too well to let them be exploited and killed for their own small failings. You've seen these characters reveal their innermost shames and insecurities, but now they've banded together, in spite of their differences, to survive. The final battle against the Bug Snacks is not very long, and if you know what you're doing, it's fairly easy, but it has so much tension because of the bonds you've forged over the course of your playthrough. As you lead the escape, there's an intense feeling of both loss and relief, as each Grumpus watches their facade of a better life crumble into the ocean. After your harrowing exodus from the island, you get one final conversation with each of the Grumpuses left, and despite everything that's happened, the people are hopeful. They're grateful they were able to escape, and thankful to you for helping them come to terms with their faults. The Grumpuses look towards the future with a bittersweet hope, and set off to better themselves. The ending postcards have this heartwarming touch where we see how each of the characters have led happier lives. Through its foreboding tone, Isolating gameplay dichotomy and nuanced writing, Bug Snacks forges a deep connection between the player and its characters. It puts you on their level and presents a wide range of people who all bear relatable faults. Given that this game is, at the end of the day, about fuzzy monster people eating animate food with googly eyes, I think that's a pretty amazing achievement. I cannot recommend this game enough. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a like, and if you'd like to see more videos like these in the future, consider subscribing. As always, stay safe and have a wonderful day.